Well, guys, it's been a very long time since I've last done an NAFL video. I actually did the 2025 season back in April. Hell, I think I did right, I mean, right after or during my time when I didn't have my computer when it graphics card broke in um, late April. I did the um, season afterwards, I think. So, like, late April. So, it's been, like, seven months. No, eight months almost since... Has done it, but I never got around to do the video. Of course, I had to wait till I got the desktop back, which I eventually did, but I just never got around to doing it until finally now, no more stalling. So here is the results of the 2025 NAFL season in Anthony's Eastern Conference. The St. Juan Islanders won it at 14 and four. They had home field I mean, first round bye too, as the Boston Luck managed to sneak in as the sixth seed at 13 five. Whoa, boy, 13 five was just barely enough to get in. And the Washington Stars finished 9-9. The Los Angeles, I mean, um, New York Towers finished 7-11. As the um, Toronto Huskies, who I think had the, one of the best records last year, finished 6-12. Not good for them. As the Columbia Cardinals finished 16-2, which I believe is the best record in their franchise history. And the best record in the league, 16-2. And they had home field advantage. They had a really strong season. As the Pittsburgh, Tow I mean, Pittsburgh Drillers went 13-5 to get the 5th seed. Then the Green Bay Cheese went 11-7 as they still can't make the playoffs. And the St. Louis Archers, after their dominance so far in the decade, have seemingly started to collapse a little bit as they went 9-9. And the Louisville Colonels just cannot get a break still as they went 6-12. And, and then, in his Southern Division, the Miami Orangemen went 8-10 and, and won the division. This is, I believe, the first time ever a team with a losing record won a playoff spot in this league. 8-10. and ten. Wow. As that division was just terrible. As the New Orleans Jesters finished 7-11. The Mexico City Aztecs finished 7-11. The Orlando Galaxy finished 7-12. And, and the Dallas Toros finished 4-14. and 14. And then, in his Western Conference, the Las Vegas Dice... Finished 13 and 5 to clinch a playoff spot. The Oakland Oats went 11 and 7. The Phoenix Cactus finished 9 and 9. The Santa Clara Gold Rush finished um 7 11. And then this is really incredible. The Los Angeles Wings finished 7 11. But look at their point differential. They scored over 50 more points than they allowed. Yet how did they go 7 11? They scored more points than even Las um Las Vegas did. The division winner. Very weird. So then in my conference, the Richmond Panthers went 12-6 and to clinch the division again as the Philadelphia um, Americans, I believe it was, because it's been a while since I've last played it, as they went 10-8, and and the Jacksonville Steamboats finished 8-10, and the Buffalo Bronx finished 7-11, and the Montreal Saints finished 7-11. and So in the Central Conference... The Wichita Thunder, after a long time away from the playoffs, I believe, made back as they went 14-4 and scored the league-best 633 points, I believe it was. Impressive to see his friend as the, the San Antonio Steers went 12-6 and, and made into the playoffs. The Memphis Jets finished 10-8 and, and missed out. As the Co um, Chicago Wolves finished 10-8 and as well and just missed out in the playoffs. As the Detroit Sparks finished... 14-3-1 is the third worst team in the league. No, fourth worst team in the league. No, fifth worst team in the league. Holy crap, it's been a long time since I last remembered this. And then the Baltimore Knights had the best record in the conference, and I believe the best record in franchise history, as they went 15-3 and with a dominant offensive showcase and a really strong defense, as the Cuban Patriots went 11-7, made the playoffs. The Atlanta Roses went 11-7, missed the playoffs, though. As the Tampa Sepvers... Um, the Tampa Bay Zephyrs, I mean, finished 3-15 and with one of the worst defenses ever in NAFL history, allowing 654 points, which is insane. And then the Birmingham um, Blaze finished 2-16 and as they broke the record for the worst defense in league history, I think, allowing 719 points. What on earth was that? Unbelievable. And then, of course, in our Western Conference, the San Diego Marines finished 10-8. and to win the division. The Denver Rollers missed out as they went 10-8, and even though statistically they were a better team than the Marines, I mean Mariners, I mean to say, as the Minnesota Raccoons finished 9-8-1, the Vancouver Storm finished 8-10, and, and 
last, I mean, second worst team in the league was the Lubach Texans as they finished 3 and 15. So, of course, in the playoffs, it was number one, Columbia. Number two, St. Juan. Number three, Las Vegas. Number four, Miami. Number five, Pittsburgh. And number six, Boston Amphi's Conference. And my conference was number one, Baltimore. Number two, Wichita. Number three, Richmond. Number four, San Diego. Number five, San Antonio. And number six, Cuba. So then, in the playoffs, in Anthony's side, it was the Boston Luck at the Las Vegas Dice. As the Dice won it 21-10 to in a defensive struggle, which sets them up at St. Juan. Meanwhile, the Pittsburgh Drillers visited the Miami Orangemen, which the Pittsburgh won it in a blowout 28-6. Of course, no surprise since Miami was 8-10, remember, as they had to go to Columbia. And in my wildcard round, it was the Cuban Patriots visiting the Richmond Panthers as Cuban Patriots destroyed the Panthers 42-17. to And even though they were supposed to go to Baltimore, some reason the game's type me on division... Um, Seeds did not work out correctly as they went to Wichita instead. And then the San Antonio Steers visited the San Diego Mariners. As San, I'm San Antonio, I mean to say, beat San Diego 31-17 to sum up at Baltimore. Then in the divisional round, it was Pittsburgh at Columbia. As Columbia barely held on to win it 20-14 in a really hard-fought game right there. As Pittsburgh almost made a comeback in the fourth quarter to make it to the conference championship. As St. Juan Islanders hosted the Las Vegas Dice. As St. Juan won it in the end 31-28 on a last second field goal after Las Vegas was down 21-7 one point to tie it up. But St. Juan held on for the victory. Then, to speak of another close one, the Baltimore Knights hosted the San Antonio Steers. That game went into overtime as Baltimore, no, lost, and San Antonio had to make a comeback. But Baltimore would win it in overtime, 37-31, to make it to the championship, I mean, conference championship. And then the Wichita Thunder would host the Cuban Patriots. Cuba would put up a good game, but in the end, the um, Wichita Thunder would hold on to win it, 37-24, to make it to the conference championship. Then, in Anthony's conference championship, St. Juan at Columbia... St. Juan scored 17 unanswered points early in the game, and then they just absolutely exploded at one point. As Columbia, deep in the third quarter, was up 20-17, to Columbia would score like 20-plus unanswered points to win it 44-20 to make it to the, comp the championship for the first time ever. Meanwhile, the Wichita Thunder would visit the Baltimore Knights as... Um, Wichita would start up 21 nothing, and then was 31-7 deep into the second quarter. But despite that, Baltimore held strong and tied the game up into the third quarter. And then, with six minutes left in the fourth quarter, they would take the lead and would hold it to win it. Exact same scores of division round, 37 to 31, without a division um, overtime this time. As Baltimore made it to the conference championship for the first time ever, I mean the championship. So then. The 2025 NAFL Championship as St. Juan Islanders played the Baltimore Knights. Well, the game was very high scoring as going into halftime, Baltimore was leading 28-21. to And then the game just went nuts after that. After that, St. Juan cut the deficit to 28-24. Then Baltimore got another touchdown to make it 35-24. Then St. Juan got a field goal. Then Baltimore got another touchdown as they are now leading 42-27. <coughs> I'm looking like maybe I could finally win our first title in our league history. But that would not be over yet as St. Juan came back to get a touchdown and the um, extra point. Going into fourth quarter, Baltimore was leading 40, I mean 42-34. Then early on to the fourth quarter... St. Juan got another touchdown but failed the two-point conversion as they are now only trailing 42-20. And then with three minutes remaining, they got another touchdown, a failed two-point conversion to make it 46-20, 46-42. And they stopped Baltimore to win the game 46-42 to clinch St. Juan's first title in franchise history and Puerto Rico's first title in probably professional football. As, uh, it's been almost 10 years in this league and my, and my conference still hasn't won a championship. Oh my god, every time I think we got it, fucking Anthony's league wins it. Uh, he's now 9-0, I believe, 
in the series in the championship. That sucks, but hey, congratulations to St. Juan Islanders for clinching their first championship in franchise history. Hoping next year I can do it and get my first title. So see you guys next time for 2026, and hopefully it won't take so